Hello and welcome to episode 38 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, where we always get what we want from eBay. This is Brandon. This is Brad. And this is Karen. Uh oh. So you want to introduce our special guest? Our special guest today is Karen Bartholomew, my wife. I've been married for, I believe, going to be 15 years. Because uh, Jordan's 14 now. So yeah, 15 years in August. And uh, she's sitting in on the podcast with us. Correction, 14 in August. We were married in 2000, so whatever the year we would be. We've been together 15 years, married 14. So in 2050, that'll be your 50 year. Correct. See, that's easy. like it easy to remember. Yeah. That's real, real easy. So game of the week? Sure. Have you been playing anything? Yep. What'd you, what have you been playing? Super Mario 3D Land. Are you going to talk about that? Yep. Uh... Heck of fun game. The one thing I li- I don't like Mario as a as a video game character because of how over popular he is. But all his games are always so fun to play. So after you beat the eight worlds, <clears throat> uh, which was pretty easy, I did it in one day. Special opens up where you could play all eight worlds again, but they're rearranged and uh, it's tougher. There's a, there's some instances where in some of the levels. Uh, before you start, you'll see a little pink Mario run towards you, the screen. And that means that he's going to be chasing you throughout the whole level. And if he touches you, you die or you get hit. And he follows your every movement. So if you jump, he'll come behind and jump. It's like a shadow. It sucks, but it's still fun. And when you beat uh, the eight levels or the eight worlds and then the first world in the special quest... Luigi becomes unlockable. Oh, that's cool. And he could he jumps higher, but he's so he, I played with him throughout the whole special level because of how far and high he jumps. But he has he lacks control than what Mario has because he'll skid and it, see just like Mario two for Nintendo. Yeah, I can't do that. Nick played the whole game through as Luigi, and I can't play as Luigi. Yeah, it's a lot better than part two and what control wise. But there'll be times when you run and then jump. And then you try to go back, but he'll skid and fall right off the platform. You just have to get used to it. And it's not as bad as Mario 2. Doki Doki Panic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mario is one of those characters where I should have put him on my list for games that I like to play but hate the protagonist. Yeah. Because he's he's just way too popular. He just needs to give it a rest a little bit. But the games are really fun. Yep. So now I'm going through... I beat the special... I, it took me two or three days, the special levels. But now, it shows which level you've got. You know how you could get on at the end of each level, there's a flag. It shows you if you got the top of the flag or not. And um, so I'm going to go through and beat each level with Mario and Luigi and get the top of the flag. Just add more to the game since... Do they have star coins in it too? Yes. And they're real easy to get in the first level, in the first go around, but the second go around, it's a little tougher. But I, I was able to find them all, no problem. Yeah. Like, uh, New Super Mario Brothers Wii. That game's really fun. Like, at the end, I don't know. Have you played it? Mm-mm. It's really cool. But, uh, I went through and I got all the star coins and played through it all. It's fun. In Mario Galaxy, do you collect stars? Like, in 64? The Kind of, yeah. I haven't played through... I couldn't get into the Galaxy. Oh, really? I thought you said it was real fun. Yeah, it is, but I can't get into it. Mm-hmm. I only play it for like a few hours at a time, then I just put it away. But if if we're playing Super Metroid, mm-hmm. I could play that game for hours. Oh, yeah? I could sit through and probably beat it like over and over again in one day, just playing it. It's so fun. That's cool. That's what we're playing right now. Um, Karen and I are playing through it, and we actually got pretty far. We got the gravity suit. Uh, it's very. I love the gravity suit so much because when you're in water, yeah. it just it sucks. Is it as bad as <clears throat> as bad as Super Metroid Eris? Like gravity suit wise? Oh yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the okay. same. Frustrating, and uh, it was so funny because we got up to the, I beat the plant boss, and then I uh we got the super missile, and you know the plant that goes around the screen. Mm-hmm. And then um, I I let Karen play, and she was playing through it, and, like, the next screen was a water part. Uh Uh-oh. It was a water part, but it was those little um, (coughs) caterpillars or pincer things Mm -hmm. that come out and grab you and bring you in the water and start 
yeah. fighting you, and there's spikes on the bottom. And, and it was, like, so hard to get out of, and we didn't have the gravity suit. It was heck of uh, funny. That sucks. So um, what do you think of Super Metroid so far? I think it's fun. Uh, it's challenging. Mm, Brad asked me to do things like jump off the of walls and roll into balls and do all kinds of crazy things, but I'm trying. Yeah, the, the technique that we never could get down where you could bounce off the walls. Uh -huh. I was like, um, we were at one part, and it, we were trying to find the gravity suit. I couldn't remember where it was, <clears throat> and so we went to the wrecked ship, and there's a part where there's water, and then so we went to the end of it, and she was standing there in the water, and the water was up to her neck, so you could jump out of it, and there was like a, a ledge, mm -hmm. so you could bounce off the ledge and bounce back up to get past it. I was like, I don't think we're supposed to be here yet. But um, I was like, just do the, the backflip out of the water. And she's like, I can't do that. You're going to have to do it. <laughs> and I think that's the only part where she gave it up like that. But she's been doing real good and getting used to the jumping. Because we got the space jump. It makes you jump higher. Mm -hmm. uh, beat Craig. The thing is, I'm horrible at jumping on little posts. Even on regular Mario. <clears throat> I'd have to jump. He has me go to the land of the things I'm the worst at. The water or jump from one little hill to the next little hill and then I ask him what's at the bottom and he don't know so I don't know if I'm <laughs> falling to a lava pit or what's going to happen <laughs> but I'm starting to learn to use my grapple hook and my there's x-ray vision yeah the x-ray vision tech and tight and there was one part where she used the grapple hook and she swung and like landed on a skinny post like the first time uh -huh. she was all excited <laughs> I did get frustrated when the one waterland we were stuck in and it had about two inches of solid ground and the rest was spikes and you had to keep jumping up the little hills to get to the top. Well, I kept jumping too far and your only choice is to land on the spikes and you have to lose life as you run out of the spikes and I'm watching all the reserve tanks just pitter away. Yeah, that was a little frustrating. So you guys beat that uh, boss in the um, underwater? The underwater boss? No, that's where we are right now. Oh, okay. We're in Meridia right now. But we beat Craig, the giant. He was such a pussy. I mean, like three super missiles just put him down. I was like, really? He too is heck of easy. Mm. But I know we're at least tougher. And the water boss, if you don't use that trick, he's a little tough too. Are you going to use the trick? Yeah. That's tight. What about, you didn't go to the ghost ship? Yeah, that, that, that's the wrecked ship. Is that, where get, is that where you get the grapple beam? Uh, The gravity suit. Gravity suit. I have to add, he made me play the ghost ship while there were still ghosts, not balls. And the stupid ghosts chase you around and keep running into you. And once you kill them, they reappear. <laughs> that yeah, is not fair, not right. And then the worst part is I die and then it's Brad's turn. And I'll be like, all that work for nothing. And he's like, no, that's easy. Everything I did for 45 minutes, he goes and does in three minutes flat. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That just comes from years of experience, though. And playing that game over and over again. Yep. And I and Logan was amazed I was playing a game. I never seen such <laughs> shock in his face. Yeah, he came out and was like, Mom's playing a game? What game? Super Metroid. Did uh, you guys do the thing that Mom used to do with us? Go to your room. Yeah. Remember that when she used to sit there and play games and we'd come out and try to watch her? Yeah. She's like, go, go to your room. He wasn't just trying to watch. He was trying to tell me how to do it. And he had no clue how to give that kid the remote or control. He would have had no clue how to double <laughs> bounce off the wall and flip and grapple hook over. We, uh, on the part where she's talking about, it's a part of the wreck ship where you're not supposed to be without the gravity suit. There's uh, grapple beams. You could grapple all the way on top. Uh, platforms floating on the water that when you jump on them, they drop down and spikes on the bottom. And we were, I was trying to get over there for the longest time, and it was just for an energy tank. Oh. Uh -huh. So I, I got the gravity suit and got back, went back and got it. What did you think was going to be over there? The gravity suit? Oh. No. <laughs> and then uh, she was amazed one part where you roll into a ball in the Chozo's hands, mm -hmm. and he walks you. Yeah. And she was like, I want to be walked by the Chozo bird. Well, she didn't say Chozo bird because she didn't know what it is. I said statue. Yeah, statue. Yeah, that's what... Chozo means uh, statue in Japanese. Oh. Or in English. Oh, okay. So that's, um, we were uh, excited too when that <clears throat> happened. Yeah. When we first played it. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, a few more weeks, because uh, we play Thursday nights, we might sneak a little bit in on Sunday nights. Uh, we should be able to beat it soon here. 
It's one of the most amazing final boss fight scenes ever. Yeah. In any Metroid game or any game in history. Yeah, it's really good. So I'm going to ask my wife a few questions. Uh, first one is, what is your favorite alcoholic drink and your favorite non-alcoholic drink? Well, my favorite alcoholic drink, I couldn't pick just one that might apply. I'm not just the one kind of person. But anyway, uh, lemon drops or an amaretto sour? I think an amaretto sour was my first love, and then I experienced the lemon drop. So those are at a tie. My favorite non-alcoholic drink has to be Diet Mountain Dew. I love Diet Mountain Dew. Diet Pepsi products are the bomb. <clears throat> so what is your favorite restaurant to eat at? Again, couldn't choose just one. Depends on the food. Uh, my favorite right now is Arigato's. I love Arigato's sushi. Um, just discovered they have one in uh, Roseville area now, so not too far from us. And I also love the Cheesecake Factory. A different spectrum there, but uh, I like the different varieties they have and the... Um, Calamari. Calamari is the yeah, best. Yeah, and that sauce, that white sauce. Oh, yeah. man. Gar Le garlic aioli. Yep, that's so good. Yep. <laughs> and the buffalo blasts <clears throat> and the Korean tacos. I take it Brandon likes the cheesecake oh, factory yeah. also. Yeah. I had an extra ingredient to the garlic sauce when I take it home. Which garlic sauce? For the calamari. Oh, uh, lemon? The white creamy garlic sauce. Lemon? No. Horseradish? It rhymes with riz. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Can you guess what it is? No. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> so next question. Uh, go ahead and tell us about our kids. Uh, just brief two to five sentences on each one. Okay, I'm going to start with the oldest, Jordan. Um, Jordan is 14 years old. I would describe Jordan as loving, intelligent, and a bit clumsy at times. Uh, but Jordan has the most generous heart. Uh, loves to help animals and people sometimes uh, can be to a fault because he can be a little gullible but he is a really loving young man I think he got that from my mom the gullibleness oh man you tell her anything she'll like believe it really we should do a virus to her and make her give us a hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> we could we could just put a note on the door <laughs> and tell her that she, her house has a virus yeah. You want to go in and tell that story? She calls me one night and she's like, hey. I'm like, yeah. What are you doing? That Those are like her fa famous first lines when she starts a phone call. Wasn't it like 11 o'clock at <clears throat> night or something pretty late too? Yeah, she was probably looking at porn. <laughs> uh, she's like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing. So I think the FBI is coming to my house. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? What did you do? They're saying that I looked at kid porn and... All this other stuff. They took a picture and it's on my laptop. I was like, oh, really? What do you mean? Because I, I didn't know about this virus yet until I got it like a few months later. Um, she was like, well, they took a picture of me and it's me looking at the camera and it says FBI search warrant. Send us uh, $100 or we're coming to get you. I just went and bought the money, Graham, and I paid them. So they take it off. Just real gullible like that. And I got it uh, a few months later and just took it off by uh, doing a quick Google search on my phone and was able to remove it. But she, she'll believe anything you, I mean, put FBI in front of it, she'll believe you in a heartbeat. I think to this day she still believes. Even when we told her, no, mom, it's a scam. You only had to do this, this, and this. She's like, no, no, I had to pay the hundred. She, to this day, she still believes the FBI Somehow, because remember, she was stealing the neighbor's internet. Yeah. <laughs> she was logging on, so she thinks that somehow that... They figured it out. They figured it out, and she, they were coming to get her. She thought I had herpes Yeah. when I told her. She <laughs> believed me 100%. Yeah, Jordan, he, he has that a little bit. Okay, Um, the next one is Sam. Sam's 10 years old, almost 11. Um, I describe Sam as brilliant. He has a brilliant mind like his daddy. He's... Um, a quiet, he's a real quiet kid um, around others. He's a thinker, kind of internal, um, but sure, he can be very stubborn. Definitely a little mini me of Brad. Um, but he has such a quiet sweetness about him. 
Uh, he can write sweet little poems, and it reminds me of his dad when we met. He used to write me poems, and I still have them all. Um, so he's got his little hidden sensitive side. But that's how I would describe Sam. Remember when you told me that story about him doing the Dragon Ball cards? <laughs> what was it? When he was sitting there, we get I gave uh, him a bunch. Or, no, when we got the lots, huh? We gave him <clears throat> Dragon Ball cards. And you called me and told me that Sam was in his room. In the playroom. Sorting and uh, separating each Dragon Ball card. Reading it. Seeing if it go, would go good in a deck. And then putting it away in sleeves. He did that for three hours, and he was like, Jordan did it for like five minutes, like, forget this. Yeah. You're on your own. Yeah. Sam was pretty little, too, when that happened, right? Yeah. Um. Okay, and then our last son is Logan. Logan is seven. I would describe him as our silly, goofy, and free-spirited kid. Uh, he loves to make you laugh. He is also my little snuggle bug. He loves to snuggle with me. Um, but I would say that he also likes to get into mischief. He tries to be cute about it, but um, he's definitely our little mischief, silly, goofy kid. And Sam doesn't go for the cute, being cute about it. No. He'll call him out and be like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Come here. And he'll like punch him. He really won't cuss or anything. But yeah, he, he calls him a little brat. Yeah. And he, he just doesn't go for Logan's sweetness at all. He's no. just like, get away from me. He knows it's a facade. <laughs> He's like, you fake. <laughs> You're such a faking fake. <laughs> but I think that our kids are um, all very different, but a perfect blend. I think that we've been blessed with uh, wonderful kids, and they all kind of balance each other out. Um, sometimes it could be chaotic, but what household can't? So yeah. that's how I would describe our kids. My last question, what's something that just irritates the hell out of you that I do? Well, there are, again is two. There's one that is occasional and one that you do all the time. So, I have one too. <laughs> I, I could, a new can one. I, can I guess? A new one, yeah. Okay. So the first one that he occasionally will do is he can kind of be cocky sometimes. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the look, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like people being cocky at all. Um, so I think he could use a little humbling occasionally. And I don't know if Brad would like me sharing this, but I'm sure he knows what it is. Uh, his digging and scratching at his genital areas, especially when he uses the cloth. <laughs> What's the cloth? It's like a metal back scratcher I have. <laughs> oh, is that that one that extends? Yes. Yeah. That, he I mean, that feels like a good digs it all in every crevice. Sometimes he'll just leave it sitting in there, and 20 minutes later, I'll <laughs> randomly hear it just pop out, <laughs> and you just kind of smell a little something, a little funky, and I know, I know that smell now when he's been digging, and I'm like, the ball smell, what are you doing <laughs> under there, uh, because I'm sure Brad's talked about how he does not wear clothes in bed, he is it's completely naked, even if we're just watching TV, gets undressed, lay in the bed to watch TV, and then we'll get dressed again when we are Exit done. The bed. Yep. And yeah, it's it seems to come on when I'm stressed. I'll like pull it up, the, the sack, and there'll just be one side that just goes down right here that I just run my finger and I'll down, up and down like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The, the only downside to the claw, it you can't smell it. It still smells like steel. Really? Gross. Aww. <laughs> That's weird. It brings the odor to the air, though. I can smell <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, speaking of digging, I walked by someone's desk uh, the other day at work, and I just looked to see if she was there. Her hand, ass deep, just digging. She was like, oh, you caught me digging in my butt. <laughs> I was like, uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was getting off the elevator today, and so, someone from work, um, she's known not to have good hygiene, just smelled like funk. I was like, what is wrong with you? And she had a bag of McDonald's, and I was like, I'm so glad you have that bag of McDonald's, because I had to ride the elevator up with her, and I just concentrated on the french fry smell. Oh, man. She was preserving water. We no. are in a water crisis. Pre preserving water? By not bathing? 
Maybe. She could go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> they have a hot tub there. She doesn't want to shower. <laughs> I've done that after my exercise. I just go straight to the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so something that what I do that irritates uh-huh. me is it something to do with eating? That's always that's not new. That is not new at all because you chew with your mouth open and it's it sounds like you're eating eight thousand bananas. <laughs> it's I, so disgusting. I agree. And you're just eating a chicken sandwich. That's what I don't get. How do you make a chicken sandwich sound like that? When he's eating something that really sounds gross to eat, it's really tortured. Sometimes I think I must really love this man when he's <laughs> chewing and digging and doing all these things at one time, and I'm just like. All at once. <laughs> scratch, scratch, pick up my sandwich, eat. <laughs> With the same hand. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sam actually hates people chewing too. And um, I was eating a, a vanilla Tootsie Roll and an orange Tootsie Roll together, make it make it taste like an orange icicle, uh-huh. popsicle. And he must not like that sound because he was like, Dad, stop it, stop <laughs> it. it. It's so irritating. Yeah. But you don't just eat gross. You eat like... Yeah. That's how I imagine the Tootsie Roll being. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But I don't hear it myself, so I don't know. You're always like, Ugh, I hate it when you eat bananas. Oh, man. Anything now. Well, that chicken sandwich took, brought me back to <laughs> when I was seven. I, I don't think you even had bread with it. Just a chicken patty. I, I turned around and looked. I was like, who the hell is eating like that? Oh, the oldest one in the house. You should have known I'm the biggest kid of all. Oh, man. I think because it was still hot, I couldn't eat it right. I, I, stop nope. trying to make excuses. <laughs> Amen, brother. So, uh, what is it then? Just how lucky you get when you find stuff at, at Dimple. Oh, okay. Like, I'll go eight, eight times in a week <laughs> and not find anything. You're like, hey, guess what I found? I found some treasure. Yeah. So, um... But the Goodwill's been pretty good to me. Great segue into treasure hunting. Oh, yeah, That, that was all my uh, questions I had for you. So thank you for being honest. Always. So let's go ahead and go into some treasure hunting. How many items do you have? One. I have two. So I went to the Goodwill, checked out the display case, and I saw probably about seven or eight games. Uh, and one of them was for Game Boy Color, Xena Warrior Princess. I was like, this is just like Barbie. And I didn't have my phone to price chart it. So I was like, uh, I'm not going to buy it because it's five bucks. I was like, I'll just um, ask the lady to hold it for me. I go and ask the lady to hold it for me. And of course, those that entitlement comes out. We don't hold stuff. So I'm like, whatever. So you used to work at GameStop or something? Um, I should have came back with that, but she still had to ring me up. So uh, I went back to work, uh, checked it, checked it out. It was actually worth twenty bucks. Oh wow! Yeah, so I ran back. It was gone. Wow. That and the rest of the games I left. But I, I think I got the best too. I always see Xena at um, Dimple for Nintendo sixty four though. Oh yeah. All right. So you want to share your first item? Sure. Got these both for five bucks. Oracle of Seasons. Do you have the other one too, Ages? Wow. And I almost kept him because I don't know where mine went. I think I had two copies of each when I used to live with you. But in between all the moves, those got lost. My two Tomba games that are worth like 80 bucks each got lost. Just a whole bunch of games, and I was trying to do it. That's why I asked about the Bowser story, because I'm trying to do inventory and see what I have and don't have. Yeah. Oh, do you have the Gold Edition Ocarina of Time? Yeah, but I think I got it from Amy. Amy gave it to me. Just the just the cart? I don't know where my cart went, but I found this. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's heck of cool. How much is it worth complete? I don't know. I didn't check it. So could I put that up and add it, put display it somewhere. I just gave Brad the box and the booklet and all the insides to the game. I remember buying that game at, I think it was at Denio's. It was only like five bucks and it was complete, but I can't find the game. Wow. Yeah, I remember Amy gave me her Nintendo 64 with that. And I was like, wow, that's hecka cool. 
Amy is um, Karen's twin sister, by the way. Uh, didn't you get the golden controller, too? I think so, yeah. I remember I was jealous of that. So, uh, how much does that worth? What? Those two games. Oh, 35 total. Wow. You, like, almost won. Oh, man. Check this out. Oh, Twilight Princess for GameCube. No book. Uh, Complete is 60. Without the book, probably get 50. Okay. How much does this cost? Uh, $18. That's cool. Another Zelda game. So we got three Zelda games here. Oh, that, yeah, we did. That's cool. All right, so let me get up this punishment prize wheel thing. I think I should get to say my treasure I found this week. What'd you find? Well, the treasure to me. Yeah? I got a couch. Oh, yeah? A love seat and a chair with the pillows. And we could have had the coffee table, but we turned it down for 200 bucks. I was pretty excited. With yes. the pillows? Yep. <laughs> where did you guys get that? Uh, Citrus Heights Yard Cell. Oh, okay. That's cool. You find deals on it there. It's real new. It does. I was yeah. really excited because we needed our old set. We've had it since oh, about 11 years. So we needed a new one bad. But anyway, yeah. that was my treasure this week, my personal treasure. Did, yep. you, did you donate that other couch to the Goodwill? Sure did. And did they um, put it out for display yet? We didn't we go, didn't go check. Oh, you can go check see how much they're trying to get it for. Yeah, because we were going to dump it on the street because I wanted to be naughty. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be naughty so bad and I couldn't do it. I, I tried. And I was just like, I felt in a bad mood afterwards. I was like, I really wanted to dump that couch. He did, and I felt bad, but I felt so excited that the Goodwill took it. Like, it made my <laughs> night. I went to sleep happy that we didn't have to dump the couch and be naughty. Yeah. It was great. Good thing he has me to balance him out, right? Yep. So let's go ahead and roll this dice here. You have a 20 sided die? On my phone. Okay. Okay. So I'll go first. Mm -hmm. 13, 9, 17. I'm good. Okay. So the choices are get dinner cooked for, which I got today, which was great. Was, was that 13? Yeah. Yeah. I remember you getting that last time. Icicle. Uh huh. Which I did last week. Yeah. I'm going to have to go for the ass punch. <laughs> what is that? It's a punch in the ass. Not the hole, right? Yep. Yeah, an uppercut. <laughs> Why do you want to punch me in the butthole? Why? You, same as a corn dog, but with your fist. All right. Let me, let me roll. You just hit roll again three times. Roll dice? Yeah. One. Give me five dollars. Nine. Get an icicle. Sixteen. Back massage. Back massage. Oh, we go to the back massage parlor together, like a pedicure. Uh huh. That's amazing, by the way. Yeah. Where's that at? Or we could do foot massage. It's over. They have one in Arden and one in Roseville. Basically, you pay like, was it twenty dollars? You get your whole foot massage, legs, and then and they, they move up it. your back and everything. If they massage you like a normal massage, but you have clothes on, basically. Oh, okay. So I prefer it over a regular. So, five dollars. Icicle. Back massage. Looks like I'm massage. getting icicled again. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, which one do you want first? The ass punch or the icicle? Or doing it both at once? If you do it both at once, you only get one sh one try to get it. Okay. So, you have to spread your legs and then bend over. And then I'll, I will get both at once. I just don't understand why men enjoy and pick... And pick What's the word I'm looking for? Inflicting, Inflicting pain on each other. We do I don't. <laughs> oh, if you, if you would enjoy it if you were the giver. Oh, yeah, I would. <laughs> I'm going to knock on wood here, and I haven't got a corn dog yet for, I think, since we started recording. Uh, I'll take care of that tonight. Uh, you could just you do it one at a time, because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, because I know you're going to go for the best <laughs> if you can only get one shot. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, just oh my it. gosh, if you guys could see Brandon <laughs> bending forward, holding his package. Yeah, I'm not, he's not getting <laughs> <laughs> And Brad is aiming it up. I gotta get the warm up here. Sure, <laughs> <Show him. laughs> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> That's horrible. You get the coxy bone. Co is that how you say it? The, the coxis? Coxis bone when you do that. That's bad. <laughs> yes, I took only while I'm on the ground. So I don't have to fall again. What was it the kids called it the other day? Buttercup. A buttercup. That's a buttercup. That's what I'm going to put on the list next. What's that? You go like this. <laughs> you cup your hand and hit the balls. I'll save you the pain of the icicle. The ass punch was good enough. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go into our top five this week. Do you want a um, donut pillow? <laughs> no. I don't have one of those. Neither do you. I do. Yes, I. Not, not with me. Not yet. Yeah. That's when I broke my bum. That happened the same night that you got corn dog that one yeah, time. Yeah, I remember that. Like, yeah, I remember I was mad when I heard about it. I'm like, you guys are voluntarily hurting your butt, and mine is broke. Okay, so we're going to roll to see who gets to go first. I got 17. Brandon? Yep. Nine. Karen? Four. Aw. So it will be me, you, and then Brandon. Number five on my list is going to have to be Video Power, which is the arcade uh, game show. That used to come on at 6 o'clock in the morning on Channel 31. That's a 90s show? Yeah. Uh. I was going to say, I never heard of such thing, but it was because it was about 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was on that early. early. Um, this was hosted by Johnny Arcade, I think his name was. Basically, four little retarded kids who didn't know how to play video games got to come out. They each did a showdown on when they first came out. Like, they had a challenge who could get the farthest in Ninja Gaiden or who could get the far farthest in Mario and whoever did not get the farthest was eliminated from the game show. Then they went on to a quiz like show where they were asked trivia questions about games. Whoever didn't get the most points got eliminated there as well. One thing I did want to say about this is the intro song was very Funky Bunch-esque. Yeah. I really like that intro a lot. I'm going to have to YouTube it and post it. The winner of the whole game show got to run through a maze with a Velcro vest and get they got to st stick video games on themselves and accessories like the power glove or the controllers and they ran through a maze and they had to stick all these games on them and they had to get to the end of the maze before time ran out or they didn't get anything so uh, I always wanted to go on there and would get all those games but never made it down to LA so that's my number five. Okay so my number five is was a uh, family double dare. Oh yeah, that's a cool show. I loved Family Double Dare. Uh, it aired from eighty eight to ninety two and was on Nickelodeon. My family watched it a lot together, and I used to really wanted to go on there as a family. I thought all the little challenge things they did um, were awesome, like the big boogery nose you'd have to pick yeah or the big pie full of whipped cream cream pie <laughs> um but that that always looked fun to me so uh that was my number five i remember um we never could watch that as often we wanted to because it came on nickelodeon we weren't hoity-toity enough to have the cable yeah so we just got normal double dare and we had the i always wanted to go through and eat the ice cream sundae at the end I don't know what you could. It wasn't edible. Yep. Didn't we get a black box at one point? Oh, yeah. That's probably where mom's uh, paranoia comes from because we got the black box. And then they also drilled a hole from the neighbors to our apartment and fed the line through with the splitter. Believe it or not, that's how we had cable was a black box. Oh, naughty. I know. Call me hoity toity. You did, just don't know. Did you ever watch the Playboy channel? Mm, not a little. I was like a teenager. Remember how it was all scrambled? Number five on my list is Roseanne. Uh, that one made my honorable mentions. Oh, okay. It became rapping in the 90s to have both parents out in the field working. Roseanne Barr, uh, John Goodman. Uh, well, not so much Roseanne, but John Goodman, uh, Michael Fishman. Fisherman? Yeah. DJ? DJ. Oh, uh, he, he made the show. Him and Darlene. Well, she's Sarah Gilbert. Sarah Gilbert. Yeah. She's on that View knockoff, huh? Yeah. yeah that's kind of sucky. I think she came out of the closet. Really? I th yeah, I think, yeah. I think everyone on that show is a lesbian. 
Really? I don't think so. Maybe, I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Roseanne made my number five. My number four, I, I feel like in the 90s, this show kind of declined as it came out in the 80s. But still, I mean, my list was Full House. Mm-hmm. John Stamos, enough said. Right. You got it, dude. That was my number four. Um, my favorite episode is when they all went to Disneyland. And this was in the 90s, I believe, because Aladdin came out. And um, that guy was doing, who voiced Aladdin, was on the show. So they got to go to Disneyland. And Michelle was being a bitch because she rubbed the lamp and made the genie come out. And she, yeah. she was like, oh, I'm the king for the day. So I get, you, you have to do whatever I say. And she's like, I want to go on some stupid ride. And Stephanie was like, I want to go on Splash Mountain or Space Mountain. And she's like, no. And then so they all got mad at her and she ran away. I was hoping that shit got real and she got kidnapped. <laughs> Why did you hate them so much? The Michelle characters. I don't know. I think because mom said that because they were twins and we were jealous. Uh, I just think because they were stuck up. They got what they wanted. All the time. Like Logan. When he straight up said, I could get whatever I want from dad. It, it doesn't matter. It could be anything. <laughs> he said that. Yeah, when did he say yeah, that? Yeah, when we were over with Nick on Night of Champions. And then so I told Nick what Logan said. And then so Logan said to Nick, can you get me some water? He's like, you don't get whatever you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he said that. Yeah. That, that's and then, not true, though. No, and then he said, Dad, can I have something? And then you brought it to him. So he looked at me like, see? <laughs> It was like a piece of pizza or something. <laughs> little Henri thing. Starting shit. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. I told you he's our mischievous one. Yeah. That's heck of funny. He learned it from Sam, though. Uh, okay, so my number four was ER. I actually started in mid-90s from 94 to 2009, but I absolutely loved that show and looked forward to every episode coming on. Um, when I was younger I really wanted to be a doctor I thought that's what I would do with my life um, I love helping people and I'm pretty good with like medical stuff but yeah I love that show everyone in my family hated it because they do not like anything gory or bloody or gross but I was all about ER man you cook them a rare steak they're like what the fuck is this <laughs> <I'm> like, <"What?" laughs> who was your favorite character on ER um, well, I'm horrible with character names, but I, my favorite doctor was like the balding. Anthony Edwards. Yeah. He was a good Revenge doctor. Revenge of the Nerds. Yep. That's what I was going to say too. And I liked the curly haired nurse, but I don't know her name. I'm really bad at that. Um, Julia Margulies. Yeah. So I never really watched important. that show either. <laughs> you never watched ER? Uh -uh. Oh, you're missing something in your life. Is it like Grey's Anatomy? Because I never watched that either. No. <laughs> How are you supposed to compare it? <laughs> it's that... not like Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy, well, I mean, maybe kind of, but to me, they're different. I like ER better. One episode that stuck out for me is this uh, one black guy was cheating on the doctor's wife, like they were having an affair. And then so the guy ended up going and throwing himself in front of a train, and they brought him in, and the doctor had to operate on him. It, isn't that the mean guy, the mean doctor? Mom always say he was real mean. I think so. I think she was just stereotyping him. Yeah, though. probably. Did you watch it with me? Is that how you got into it? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Number four was Full House for me, and uh, an episode that sticks out to me actually gave me like kind of nightmares. Like a boner. No. If I really knew what was going on, then probably. But um, it was when Jesse and Rebecca first got married. And they were like, when can we go visit him? Because they were up in the attic yeah. just going to town, like for weeks. And Danny said, you can't. They're doing their taxes. I'm like, I'm going to have to be stuck for two weeks doing taxes when I turn into an adult. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that heck of sucks. So I didn't want to grow up. But then when I got more non-naive, then I figured out what they were doing. <clears throat> Number three on my list is going to be Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh Pretty iconic in the 90s, uh, really popular. It was original, it was witty. Uh, I was actually old enough to appreciate it. It actually went on to the 2000s as well. Uh, my favorite episode was Hush. It was a real creepy episode. Uh, I think it was in season four yep. with the gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And they took everyone's voices and they're really creepy looking guys. 
kind of like Slenderman's now, but yeah. and they um, did they have some to do with a heart or something, something like that. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty cool. That was on the movie. Gordon's actually uh, revisiting all the Buffies right now. He he's enjoying them a lot. That's good. Yeah. Um, my number three. I don't know if you guys ever watched, but uh, was Dawson's Creek. I watched like the first season. Yeah, it was like late '90s, from '98 yeah. to um, 2003. I just remember always hearing that theme song and getting depressed for some reason. I didn't like the theme song. Either. Yeah, I didn't either. But yeah. I liked the drama of the show. I, I watched the whole first season. I'll, I'll admit that. But then after <laughs> that, I just I think it's because I couldn't record it. <laughs> <laughs> so we should maybe revisit that. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, you were always talking about Percy. You were always talking about the show. I was like, I don't care if oh, I don't yeah. watch it. Yeah. Like, oh Percy, you went for so, Michelle he's Williams so bitch, funny. The blonde bitch instead of Joey. I think that was her name. Katie Holmes. Put her on the map. <laughs> Number three on my list is a sci-fi um, TV show. Sliders. I put that on my honorable mentions. I'll tell you why when you're done talking about it. So, uh, Jerry O'Connell, great actor, plays a, a super nerd scientist who figures a way to uh, basically warp through parallel universes, and there's always uh, different things going on. It's, sometimes it's similar, sometimes it's a complete wasteland, but uh, him and Rembrandt and uh, the professor, Arturo or something. Gimli. <laughs> Is it Gimli? Yeah, oh, okay. Gimli from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, they just, basically they warp to one world, and there's a certain time limit on which uh, the portal will open again so they can go back to their previous world. But what they have to do is, when they warp, they have to automatically warp again because it's such a dangerous planet. There's like, it's about to be destroyed. So that throws them into a chaotic loop where they don't know where they're at. And uh, the one time he gets back home... This is why it's on my honorable mention. Ah, uh, it sucked. It was like the end of season one or two. He's but, like, this gate squeaked for the last ten years of my life. Because they only had two minutes. They mm-hmm. were like 30 seconds or like a millisecond to decide if they're staying or not. And they just saw him to warp right in front of his house. And so he's all like, okay, this gate, gate has squeaked for the last ten years. I don't know if this is my home. If this doesn't squeak... We're just going to leave. And he moves the gate, and it doesn't squeak, and he's like, oh. And they leave to another parallel universe. Because there's like millions, billions, and it's so hard they'll ever get home. So less of a chance they'll get home. And then uh, after they warp, the guy says, I fixed that squeak in your gate, uh, Mrs. What, Mallory. Yeah. And he was home, but he didn't stay home. That's still fucking retarded. That's why I put on my honorable mentions. I'm, I started watching it on Netflix when I first got it, like, I'm up to like season four, and I just fell off, but I have to go back and finish it and see if it ever makes it home. Yeah, I, my favorite episode was the zombie one. Oh, yeah. When they were all infected, and because the world didn't have penicillin. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, what are we on, two? Two. My number two is Married with Children. That's my number two. <laughs> that's like a funny. Yep. Uh, Al Bundy and Peg Bundy are so hilarious. I really wasn't old enough when I was watching it to get all the jokes on it. Like, I go back and I was like, oh, wow, they really did that. But my favorite episode was when, when they all held up in the grocery store. Yeah. For some reason, I seem to like episodes of TV series that happen during summer break. I don't know why. Maybe because I, I like summer break. But uh, it was hot. The air conditioner went out. So the bunnies decided to go live in the grocery store. And they um, they were, like, held up in there. They had lawn chairs sitting in front of the freezers and stuff. It was just hilarious. And that's where they become like the millionth customer or whatever. Yeah. Because I, who, who lets them in front of him? Marcy or Marcy something? Marcy Darcy, yeah. And she lets him in front. To buy some gum. You could do that and then he ends up being the millionth customer and they have like a race off or something. To, yeah, something like that. It was pretty. It was a pretty entertaining episode, but all the jokes that he has about the ladies in the shoe store, how their shoes never <laughs> fit, and, uh, it's just hilarious. I think the, like, the funniest thing I really didn't get but I still laughed anyway, was all the time when Kelly would reference Bud using his hand a, as a date or like a sex doll. I thought it was funny, but now that I realize what she was really talking about, it's even funnier. Yeah. And, um, the, like, I'll put my hands on my pants like he did. I was like, man, this is heck of a Yeah. I, yeah, I'd tell you know that for the past couple months. And 
I would be sitting here in the garage with my hand down my pants just watching TV. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm pulling an out Bundy. Like, I don't even notice I'm doing it. Okay, so my number two, of course, is 90210. That aired from the 90s to 2000. Um, <laughs> I remember my parents even watched this show with us. I love this show and look forward to it every week. Uh, just seeing the uh, Brenda and Dylan dramas and... Donna and, uh, what was her guy's name? It was Brian, Brian Austin Green. It was his name. Was it Brian in the show? I think it was, was Brian. It Brian? Yeah. It's amazing that I can't remember Brenda and um, Dylan, but, yeah, I love that show. Watched it every week. Watched I, all the reruns. I remember thinking, Brian could do so much better than her, Donna. Donna looks like a horse. I, I always thought Donna was ugly, too. I was like, Didn't yeah. she... Didn't she try to commit suicide, or is that Jenny Garth's character? Probably Jenny Garth, because she was like that get drunk. Yeah. Got drunk all the time. Ian Zeering. I forgot what his name is in the show, but he was pretty cool too. Yeah. And now when I look back on it, it was a pretty scandalous show, and I can't believe my parents let us watch it, because we were not really exposed to much. We weren't allowed to really watch much. Uh, I remember when we, the first time I snuck and watched Boys in the Hood, and thought I was doing like the most scandalous thing alive but um that's why you ended up watching porn on the black box yeah but now that i look back at it it was pretty scandalous still but anyway yeah i liked that one a lot another one of my favorite episodes of course took place during the summer when dylan got hurt on the surfboard yeah and then the, he like had stayed at the walsh's house i was like brenda's there they're probably gonna end up making out or something yeah. and they did <laughs> yeah i remember that I remember uh, Sammy came over because we had a 90210 poster on our door and he was making fun of it and his mom said, you watch that show? Why are you trying to, why are you trying to lie? So we're like, you watch that, Sammy? Sammy was retarded. Not, re he wasn't really retarded. Well, yeah, he was retarded. <laughs> he was like a crack baby. Because retarded isn't the same as mentally handicapped. Retarded is like you're fucking retarded. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being Stop being retarded, like being faggy. Faggy, yeah. yeah. That's not meaning being gay. Stop being a fag, like yeah. stop being a dick. Yeah. So your number two was Married with Children? It was, yep. My number one's going to have to be Simpsons. That's not your number one? No, it's not. Oh, wow. It didn't even make my list because I forgot about it. Uh, uh, Simpsons is a great show. I think everything before season 10 was fabulous. Yeah. It was wonderful. I can't watch the new stuff anymore because they just tried to get edgy like South Park and it's just like, come on, just go back to what you know. Uh, my favorite episodes were, of course, summer vacation ones when they get the pool, when they go to Itchy and Scratchy Land, uh, and when they use Flanders Beach House. Uh, they end up playing a game on the, when they find it, that they find in Flanders Beach House. It's like Dream Date or something. It's supposed to be like life, but for Dream Dates. Yeah. And, uh, Homer gets like the, uh, captain of the football team, <laughs> and Bart gets the dweeb, and, and the dweeb looks like Millhouse, because Millhouse is there too. And he goes, Hey, look, Poindexter, he looks like you. Yeah. And the whole Itchy and Scratchy Land, when the robots come to life, it's like Jurassic Park, and they have to use the flash photography to kill the robot. Mm -hmm. And um, when they get the pool, that's probably my favorite episode, when Bart breaks his leg and they get in the whole pool, and the pool mobile comes, and they try to hide out under it, and he's like, I'll just go where the pool goes, and he can't hold his breath. Trying to be a transient. Yeah. And uh, he ends up breaking his leg up when they first get the pull up. Did he break his leg on the trampoline? No. He was on top of the treehouse. Oh, that's right. I and Nelson to said, off. your uh, epidermis is showing. <laughs> He's like, in fact, the epidermis is your head or something. Yeah. Or your skin. Yeah. And Bart falls off because he needs to talk about his wiener. That uh, Simpsons ride right at Universal Studios is like a tight, too. Yeah. Uncle Ron was scared to death. Even though he was holding on to me. Even though he, and he was crying. Yeah, I know. <laughs> even though it didn't do anything, really. It just was like a movie. Yeah. It was still cool, though. Yeah, real, real cool. Okay, my number one. Um, I still love the show, and I was thinking about it today that I need to go back and rewatch it, but it was is a Party of Five. Hmm. It was on Fox. It aired from 94 to 2000, and I remember feeling like I wanted to cry when the last episode aired because I would miss that show so much. White people problems. Yeah. I love Party of Five and uh, probably like um, in the last season I remember 
so many people told me I looked like um, Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. Everyone was like, "Oh, you look so much like Nev Campbell." And I remember thinking, "Oh, I could be on Party of Five. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need to rewatch that show because I loved that show. So yeah, that, that you, was you, my one. You could have been her evil twin. Evil. Her naughty twin. Mm. Then Andy Pilato could have been on that show. Why? Because <laughs> he was a pretty person too. No, but he committed suicide, so. <laughs> uh, number one on my list is A Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's such a great show. It had its funny moments, it has its dramatic moments. Like uh, when Will got shot. <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah, it was Will, huh? And then Carlton bought a gun and was like, look what I got, I got a piece. Yeah, it got real. But, uh, just the best scene that pops into my head every now and then is when uh, Carlton's driving alone, of course, yeah. at night time. I don't know if he's singing or talking to himself or trying. He's keeping a journal, I like think. Like Captain's Log yeah. on Star Trek. And all of a sudden, Will pops up in the back seat wearing a Freddy Krueger mask and a glove and says, get the stick out of your butt. Yeah. And I, just that alone made number one. But that's such a great show. And uh, my favorite is when they're trying to get their way home and get money and they enter a strip contest or a dance contest yeah. and they to Apache. That was that same uh, episode, yeah. huh? Yeah. And Carlton was gambling. Mary kept uh, trying to gamble and that didn't work. And then that one time when Will dropped him off in the hood and Carlton got all gangster. Oh, I don't remember that one. And he had like a do-rag and everything and he was heckin' serious. Oh, man. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I thought about that show also. I love that show, and I totally rocked the intro every time <laughs> it came on. Would sing it and just believe that I was a rapper. I love that show. Too bad Will Smith's a Scientologist. Is he? Yeah. Oh, what Since a fag! I thought he was a Scientologist. I could look it up. Tom Cruise is. I know Tom Cruise is. Let me look up. Maybe I misspoke. So, on my honorable mentions. I have down Hercules, The Legend Continues. Oh, man. Is that because Matt used to watch it? Yeah, I put on my honorable mentions because I only watched a few episodes. Yeah. I put down here, I should have watched this more because the whole, uh, I'm into Greek mythology a lot yeah. when I was little and that was cool. I put down WWF Raw, debuted in the 90s, and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Even though it was a kid's show, it was still a, I considered a show because it wasn't a cartoon. They had great um, season premieres too, like they left you off the cliffhanger, and then the season premiere of like the White Ranger or the yeah. Green Ranger or a new uh, Lord Zed. Remember him? Lord Zed was hecka tight. Yeah. The Gold R. Yeah. Gold. Well, Zed was the like the he came out in the second. Season, yeah. Uh, and he was like the new villain that everyone was talking about. He was even in TV Guide. Yeah, he was. And uh, yeah, Gold R was pretty cool. I like how he always, like, talked big and bad, but always bowed down to whoever was in charge. Yeah. It's funny. Did you guys ever watch the show Hey Dude? Nuh-uh. It was on Nickelodeon also. But I thought about that one. Amy and I used to watch Hey Dude all the time. So, it's been speculated that Will Smith is part of the Scientology Church. Uh, in a interview on Fox News in 2008, Someone, he was interviewed and asked if he was a Scientologist, and he replied, I am not. Uh, he just says, you could take different parts of things you like and put them all together. And he, they, him and his wife continue to donate money to the Church of Scientology. It's kind of fishy. Yeah, it is really fishy. He donated $70,000 one year. Dang. But why would you not admit it? I don't know. Maybe because, you know, they get a bad rap. Maybe, but I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Have you seen After Earth? Hell no. Why not? It's like a zero popcorn things on the Netflix. On demand when you go to search. There, on. There's, it's on Netflix? No. It's on demand. You oh. can buy it on demand and it tells you a rating. It has like popcorn. And if it's good, it'll have a full bag of popcorn. It's like over 70%. It has zero and it turns sideways. <laughs> well, I wanted to see it because there's supposed to be heck of cool monsters in it. Yeah, I heard it. It sucked really bad. Maybe I'll check it out when it once it hits uh, Netflix. Uh, on my honorable mentions, I've got Family Matters, uh, Boy Meets World, uh, and that was all. So we're going to jerk of the week. I had one too. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Go ahead. So I'll go first. Yeah. Um, jerk of the week. Going to be short and sweet. Family members who don't have the balls to say something when they're mad at you. Okay. Like, I'd say two come to mind. Uh-huh. And I don't know why people... And if you're listening, you know who you are. Who is it? Okay. You notice something's up because, like, something about... Like, back when MySpace was big, they, like, move you at the bottom of your MySpace page. I forgot that you could categorize your friends like that. <laughs> and then they wouldn't take you off, but they'd move you to the bottom, like, you're my shitty friend. Yeah, because you ranked him, like, one, two, and three. Yeah. And, yeah, I remember that. And then they're... Or they'll do something like, they won't text you when you text them. like Or remove you from Facebook for some reason. Yeah. Like, and, and if you're upset, if I did something to annoy you or make you upset, just tell me. I'm a big boy. I could handle it. You know, of course I might debate it with you and tell you why you're a fucking idiot, but <laughs> I could handle it. Like, if I'm, like, mad at you or... I'll have to, like, come over and hit you or something. Like, the time I got the water bottle and hit you with it. Or... <laughs> The frozen water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that put a dent in your life. Yeah, it's still there. You remember why you did that? <laughs> yeah, because... Um, Why'd you shove your fingers up my butt? <laughs> oh. <laughs> because we were playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh-huh. And I was losing. And what so, deck was I running? Was it the mill deck? Ancient Jar? Probably, and I had the Dark World deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was getting hecka pissed, and you're like, let's play one more time. And I'm like, I don't want to. And then so, like, I was like... No, no, you beat me. It was I was like, oh, I guess oh. that's five. My five against your one. Yeah, that's what I said. And then I started hitting you, and then I got on you. I was like, I'm just gonna stick my fingers up your butt, and I like did that. And then I was like walking away, and then I went to the kitchen to go calm down because I knew I was upset. <laughs> and then uh, Jordan's like, "What's Dad doing?" And then you're like, "Oh, your dad likes to put fingers up people's butt." Then as soon as I heard that, I grabbed the water bottle from the freezer, and I was like 20 feet away. I don't know how I hit you. I like threw it, it with dead accuracy and hit your shin bone. You weren't, 20, you weren't 20 feet away. No? You were like three feet away. Because oh. you were going to hit me with it, but then you decided to throw it at my leg. <laughs> Probably because you were blocking like yeah. this, and I was getting mad. Like, I can't uh, take that. <laughs> Get a little homoerotic. Okay. <laughs> Ancestral homoerotic. Yeah, that's... I don't know. If you're going to be upset with someone in your family, you should be close enough to talk it out and move past it instead of holding resentment towards that person. Or just pussyfooting it around. Like, what's wrong? Nothing. You obviously know something's wrong. Yeah. Like, why are you... I know something's wrong. Why are you being a bitch about it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Turn to a GameStop. No, a GameStop employer would confront you, no matter how weak they are. Yeah. They would still voice their opinion because they know you can't hit them because they they have the law on their side or whatever. <laughs> um, they have cameras. Yeah. Anyway, if you got problems with people, just voice them and get past it. Because holding resentment towards someone is drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. That's all it is. Yeah, and the other person is just like, la di da like nothing's wrong. Yep. And all you're doing is hating on yourself and you're being all bitter. There'd be a lot less suicides in the house if you just express your feelings. <laughs> in which house? Exactly. In which house has suicide? <laughs> in Andy Pilato's house. <laughs> That's sad. Poor Andy. Andy Pilato. I still have my quarter. Oh. You should wear it one night. Like on your anniversary, your next anniversary. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> It'd be over. we get some anal rage going that day. So my jerk of the week actually happened today. I was at Naja's award ceremony. And, you know, when they say your kid's name, you clap. But then the people that's like, that's my baby! <laughs> like, like, they, yeah, you raised them and everything, but why do you have to point out to everyone that your person got a 3.2 GPA? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> they don't have your brain. <laughs> but um, there's one family, uh, he's Samoan. Oh. So, so when he... Was uh, it Aki? No. Deaf Aki? So when he got his award, it happens ever because him and Nas are in the same class since third grade. So whenever he gets called up or something, he goes, let's go, oos! 
I would say, oh, one <laughs> day I'm gonna do it. You should, dude. Yeah, he, he, let's go, Us. Uh, and they, oh, Uso. <laughs> but I haven't, done, I haven't done it yet. They're proud that baby graduated with a GPA of 3.2. Yeah, but still, you don't have to bring attention That's to like yourself. That's five times better. That's rated. like stealing attention from the kid and putting it onto yourself oh, yeah. to have them be like. It's just that entitlement that they have. <laughs> you love that word, like, entitlement. <laughs> yeah. When I speak about jerks. Cool picks. So uh, there's uh, two two games. The Broncos against the Patriots. And the 49ers against the Seahawks. So one team or one uh, match or bout. What are they called? Um, battles. One battle. I use. Emo just pure emotion, like my own emotions. And in the second one, I use st statistics. So, of course, let's get the emotion one out of the way. Seahawks and Niners. A lot of, I mean, I'm born and raised in Sacramento, an hour and a half away from San Francisco. But damn, that weather in Seattle is so nice. You, I mean, stormy, cloudy weather all day, every day, basically. You can't get away from that. So I'm going for the Seahawks. It's home court advantage, too. Is it? Where, where, they're in, in Seattle? Seattle? Oh, okay. And uh, they actually banned people from Sacramento or California going to the game. They said only if you live in Seattle or Washington or like Idaho, you could go to the game. How can they do that? That you need to show driver's license when you go in. Why? Probably to d deter 49er fans from that's, going in. That's retarded. Yeah. I stand by my decision, though. Now, the second one, um, Patriots and Broncos. Um, oh, the Broncos made it this year? Yeah. Elway? Uh, no, uh, um, one of the Breezy brothers. What is it? Drew Brees? No, the Bre no, Breezy. Bra Brady? No. No, that's Patriots. Who is it? One of the Ma fucking brothers. <laughs> uh, McMahon? Manny. No. Manny. Ma yeah, Manny. 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 Ooh, yeah. That took a lot of brain power. <laughs> um, it's in there somewhere. Yes. I don't know if it's Peyton or Elijah or e Eli, I think his name is. But um, what's going to play the biggest part, I don't know where they're playing. If it's snowy, it's going to be snowy, and New England's going to have the advantage because it's colder there in, than in Denver. But uh, there's going to be the oppressive defense in the backfield of the safety is going to play a big part. Uh, I have a prediction that the score is going to be 60 to 89 Dang. In, in favor of the Patriots. How do you come up with that number? It's a simple math that you do. You actually have, you, you take the number of players and the number of timeouts in a given game, and what you have to do is take the 3 1 or the 4 position. So if you're, if you have a 4 4 base defensive position, then you have to take that by the number of timeouts. And there's 3 and a, and a half, or 3 and a um, quarter, or 3 in an inning. So that's four times four, four times three is twelve, and then you multiply by, by the four by four defense. Uh, that, that's like around seventy something, I think, off the top of my head. And then you take the number of offensive offensive nose rush guards into account as well. It's just a simple math, and then that's how you get the numbers. You made my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going for Seahawks and Patriots. Patriots. Yep. From the Mel Gibson movie. Blasphemy. Yeah. 49ers you, you, you weren't here to, to hear my rationale on the 49ers, even though I was born and raised in Sacramento. It's based pure on emotion. The weather in Seattle is just has this out, outbeat, and I think that's going to do it for us, for the Seahawks. It's always rainy, and I mean, who doesn't love a, to have like rain year round? Dude, we, we need some rain here in California. Dude, we're dying. They have a crisis going on. All my kids are taking showers together. Uh, yeah, are they going to start charging more for water? You get penalized. What do you mean? If you like, don't use fifty percent less, you get a hundred dollar penalty. What? And it can go up to a thousand dollar fine. Yikes! I didn't know about that. I guess you get one warning. Oh, and it, cool. And after that, if you go over it, then you get a hundred dollars, and it keeps going up. How? So when do you like? When do they give you the warning after a month of usage or? If you go over, probably, it, probably when you get your bill. If you go over 
Like, so whatever you usually use, you have to use 20% less. That's retarded. Yeah. I'm so glad I stopped taking showers when I poop. Yeah, I'm going to have to um, shower at the gym now. Because I love me some hot showers in the morning. What, you take long ones? Oh, are you going to sit down in the gym too and Heck shower? no. Not unless yeah. I get a butt donut. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for episode 38 of Treasure Hunt for Nostalgia, where we don't think the greatest Pokemon in the world is Mew or Mewtwo. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Karen. Happy hunting.